Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for part two on this discussion about COVID-19 and teens and how to navigate that as a family. I'm blessed to have these three people back with me again. I've got Matt McLean right here who is pastor of student ministries. We have Kim Smith. She does small groups with uh, our teen girls in the high school area. And then we have Austin Parker who is an elder at our church. Awesome guy. Uh, works with teens as um, the leader of spiritual formation, I believe, at Cornerstone. So great, great, great group here. Knows a lot about teens and a lot about Jesus. So that's a good combo. So we're going to kick off here and uh, talk a little bit. I'm going to start with Kim. And I want to talk about devices because devices and screens have always been a challenge. <laughs> and so even before we hit a pandemic, parents are like, how do I navigate this? My kids, my IT department, you know, like they know more about this stuff than I do, yet alone I'm trying to navigate all this new technology that's always changing all the time and trying to stay ahead of my kids with it. And then you go into a situation like this, like lockdown with COVID and like my household, for example, my wife and I both work full time. So we're trying to navigate devices in all of this. And our, it's not like our kids, they can go outside and play somewhat, but for example, yesterday it snowed. So uh, challenging times, let's talk a little bit about how you navigate devices through a time like this and what can be the impact of devices on teens uh, during something like this? Well, obviously, um, we're leaning on those and depending on those devices more than ever before. Um, I would hate to know how many hours I'm on my phone and computer right now. Um, it's uh, actually really scary. I'll probably have to get a new um, eyeglass prescription at the end of this, but um, I feel like some of our students are really doing well with it. I like, feel like right now, like social media, I, I honestly follow mostly students, I would say, and I've seen a lot more positive than I ever thought I would. There's, a, there's that element of that social piece where when they're in their normal life and it's a normal functioning um, day for them, they can see a lot of things on that social media that feel alienating because they are missing out on things. And right now we're in a really unique phase where nobody's missing anything. We're all, there's like a total equilibrium for everybody. We're all the same. And I think a lot of people are really um, using that to their advantage. I don't even think they know that it's an advantage to them right now but I don't think it's dragging them down as much as it could at some point. So I think in that way, um, in that small way, it's become a positive thing. My um, daughter just got um, Instagram for the very first time right now. She's been holding off on that for a long time and finally decided, well, this is perfect time to make the, you know, make that adjustment. And she's, uh, She's jumping in there with a lot of her, her friends that are really trying to be positive and encouraging and even minister to other people. So I think in that way, it's really helpful. Um, she's also had to tell herself, I need to walk away from this because she's now realizing how much time it takes to do this little video or this, you know, this post and whatever. It really takes so much. It it's just sucks the time out of our life. And I think um, for us, and we're not, we, we've had to readjust completely right now, but to um, have parameters for that has always been really helpful. We actually have screen time parameters in our house, which has really been blown out of the water right now, like I said, but, um, but I think if they can be taught that it's okay to set that down and not even look at it, not even think about it for some of the day, that they will hopefully be able to fill that with, um, with some other things that are really good for them. Um, a lot of them that are um, digging into the word more, it's because I, I guarantee they can't do that if the phone is going off every five seconds next to them. But I, so I know there's some that are out there doing that. And that is something that as parents, we have the opportunity to lead them in that. Um, let the phone stay downstairs at night or whatever it is that you system you have in your home um, to give them a break. I think it's gonna be important um, for adults and students. Um, we can use it well, or um, if we're not careful, we can also let it take over, so. 
Uh, what are the, what about uh, Austin? What do you see in terms of that? Like when it comes to screens and because I know like um, for example, you working at a school that, that has high schoolers and things like that in it. I mean, how do you guys how, how do you navigate that? Yeah, I uh, I just you know echo Kim. I think um, students recognize um, the formational power that devices have. Um, they recognize when, you know, and, and like a lot of us do, you know, uh, you go through and you scroll and you're like, whoa, where did that hour go or, you know, whatever. And uh, I, I, I think kids are aware of that, of, of the, you know, just the temptation to spend a lot of time at that, that time. Um, but the, the thing that I, I just, and I'm, I'm kind of amazed by um, is now we have this environment where we do need our, our screens to do schoolwork. We need our screens to, to communicate. But um, in that, I think, you know, we're seeing the good sides of, of technology mm -hmm. and I, we need that reminder. Like, okay, these, these things are, I think we live in, or a lot of us live in the narrative of, uh, you know, these are really bad devices and a lot of bad can come from those devices, which again, emphasizing the parental technology plan is key. Um, you need to figure out what that looks like. I, I highly recommend, you know, no devices in the bedrooms at night that can keep kids awake. And there's a lot of temptation that can come with devices and rooms. Uh, at nighttime, but the kids are using them to connect with one another. I just got off a Zoom call with some of our students and they had had four uh, friend meetings, just asking each other, hey, how are you doing? Monopolize and capitalize on the good, lean into the good. Um, and, you know, it, 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 I think it provides the, the, the environment where, where we can lean into some of the, the positive things that can come from, um, from technology. And, and then in the midst of that, you know, be cognizant of the ways that you as a parent are using technology too. We've got to model that for our kids. Yeah, I think uh, for us, it's been, we kind of delineate, like we have what is like, um, like open screen time where you're free to play games and stuff like that. But we also have educational screen time so if you if you're working on your work which you need to do um and you finish that early like let's fill it with like pe like learning piano stuff or so we kind of delineate in our household educational screen time free screen time and then we have what's called the zero screen time which is like no t everybody in the house is off screens no tv no cellular devices no nothing so that way we all get a break and so because i think the hard thing is um it's really easy to go, well, you know, no, like, um, to go, well, because that's what, part of what parents are navigating, right? Like, my kids need to do their homework. So, or like, my kids want to work on piano or something like that. Like, one of my kids loves a piano app. But even that, even the good, you can have too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I mean, so it recognizes the value of technology, but also enables people to recognize that even the good of it, you need a break from it, period. So, so yeah, uh, let's jump into then I got a question for Matt here. Um, okay, this is new to us. There is no physical church. <laughs> I mean, even in acts like they could meet they met in households. We can't really do that right now outside maybe our family like at Eastview we've suspended small groups for the most part people are meeting on zoom. So we can legitimately say in the history of the world there's never been a time of church like this. So I want to ask you, um, when it comes to this generation, um, when it comes to church, how is this going to form and shape them, and how does it impact their view of church, their spirituality, and their faith? Yeah. Well, statistics would say that you know that this generation probably wasn't as consistent as past generations anyway. Yeah. Coming to a physical building, you know, <clears throat> we see more students in small groups than we see on Sunday mornings, you know, at time, uh, you know, some parts of the year. And I would hope uh, that, that they would maybe even feel a desire for that uh, Christian community that they've lost, 
you know, instead of like it just being something they do on Sunday morning, you know, oh, I got to I go to church. This is what I do. Um, and, and when a when a high school student has that, that mentality and then goes to college and they automatically realize, wait a second, this is not something I have to do anymore. Uh, I think that's a big part of them leaving the church, you know, walking away from that because it's not something that's ingrained in them anymore as like a weekly rhythm um, that their parents do or maybe their friends and their community does. So I would hope that maybe they would feel this, this loss of, of their church community, their, their, their home, you know, family, their Christian community. And when we come back together, um, man, the celebration that that will be, you know, the, 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 the sound of like hearing people sing together. And, and I would, I would really hope that God would um, really instill on us in that moment that when we come back together, a great reminder of the goodness that we have within the church community, you know, the, the, the things that are positive, there's so much, you know, there's so much negative towards the body of Christ. There's so much negative towards the church. Um, and even now, like, and there's so much negative um, towards the church and the church isn't even meeting, you know? Um, but I would hope that when we come back together, they would be reminded of the goodness of God, the goodness of the church and, and that they would be encouraged on the flip side of that. I would hope that they would see that, that God is still moving even without a building and, and God is still doing something without a physical location. Um, so, so I hope they get the, the picture of both the need and the desire for it, but also that God is not locked into a building um, and that they would, they've actually experienced God in a great way during this time without going into our physical buildings. So this is just some thoughts on that. I don't know what you guys think. Um, but Yeah. I, if I can pipe in and just for a second, I, I totally agree. And I think, um, you know, we had talked about trust and in the, in the previous episode. And I think that as we're establishing new rhythms of life, um, you know, one of those areas can be the way in which we're, uh, pressing pause on the event and leaning into the relationship uh, that we have through Jesus. And so um, showing, you know, showing kids that, you know, a, a relationship with God is what you're made for. And these other things that we do are the result of an inward change. And, you know, what are those ways I can grow in my relationship with the Lord? I know a lot of students are have started Bible studies with one another um, and they, they'll meet over technology or just simply, uh, you know, as, as parents, you can just do that with your family. If you've never done family devotions before, this is a great time to open up the Bible, to pray together, um, to study God's word together. And I think all of that helps build uh, that relationship with, with, with Jesus um, and, and then enables kids to see, you know, hey, I, I come to church uh, because of what Jesus has, has done for me. And I miss that, but I know that it first starts inwardly. And so, you know, we can model that posture and maybe begin some new practices if we haven't, haven't done that um, you know, before now. I would say one of the things that really excites me, a possibility is when we come out of this, there's going to be need. And man, I would love to see this generation fill that gap in terms of service because mm. there's always been opportunities to serve and there's always been need, but it'll probably never be as great in their generation as when we come out of this and the opportunities for them to serve and sacrifice and give. And you talk about somebody owning their faith and it materializing past an event. Um, man, I just think service out of this. I think it's the a big revival movement that God could bring in youth is when they dive in and they see needs and their faith isn't just heard um, from somebody else, you know, but it's something that's experienced as the spirit moves through them as they love others as Jesus loved the world. So I think it's a really ripe for revival. Mm. It's true. So, yeah, some of the best stories right now are just the church in action, serving others and families doing that together. I love it. Yep, absolutely. So 
So I just kind of want to give you guys kind of a free opportunity. I always like to wrap these things up with, um, if there was one thing that you could say to parents, what would you say? Um, and give you kind of a blank slate to fill in there because God, I'm convinced, has probably laid something on your heart in terms of, I would love for parents to hear this during this time. And so let me go ahead and start with you, Matt. I'll kick it off with you. If you could say one thing to parents right now trying to lead their kids through this unique time, what would you say? Yeah. Well, I'm not like the three of you, like you all have Gen Z kids. Uh, I, I, uh, so I'm not speaking from experience with being a parent, but I, I would just say that I hope that you look at this time not as a burden, but as an opportunity. Um, and I've really had to reshape my mind with that. Like week one, two, and three, I was really frustrated. Uh, I'm an extrovert. So I was locked in my house, couldn't talk to people. And it hit me just in the last week, like looking at my daughter and looking at my son and my wife and realizing, and this is an opportunity that I will never have again. This is different than summer break. This is different than any, we are in this house constantly together. And I um, have loved every second of it since. And, but it was a choice I had to make. And, and I hope that you do. And I hope that you make the opportunity um, something that is, is not a burden, but a, but an opportunity for you and your kids, so. Yeah, that's awesome. What would you say, Kim? Well, as someone who has older students and one who has returned home, he's now, he's a 20 year old and he's home too. I will say that this is the moment I've been waiting for. You know, like <laughs> there's a lot of us that it's like, we miss our kids, we really do. <laughs> so, um, so let's soak it in is what I would say. I'd say use like, like Matt was saying, exactly. Use the time wisely. But I mean, like show them your faith, um, take the time, but don't stress about it. Don't like put so much pressure on yourself or them to perform that you miss the small moments because those um, are easily underestimated. There are times to celebrate, there's structure that we need, but, um, and there's big moments that we can plan, but just doing life together is an art that I feel like we've lost mm -hmm. in some ways. And this gives us an opportunity to really reconnect on those small ebbs and flow level that are just um, very sweet, that once this is over, <laughs> Who knows when they're going to want to come back to the house after that, right? So, but just to like really, just really um, enjoy. And, uh, but seriously, at the same time, um, let it just happen in a lot of ways because I am really good at putting pressure on myself. Why am I not getting all the projects done that I wanted to get done and all those things when really I just need to take a second and just let the spirit guide where he wants us to go as a family today. And um, that's been a very sweet um, part of this for us. Austin, what about you? What's one last thing that you'd like to leave? Yeah, uh, I echo all of those, all of those things. Um, you know, uh, one, uh, we, we experienced, you know, a little bit of the frustration or the anxiety and, uh, right at the beginning, but um, what we learned and what, what God, I think, really helped us with was just take it one day at a time. Um, it, you, you guys are uh, in one of perhaps the most important roles uh, in the entire world. You are a parent, and that is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. And to, to, to take things one step at a time, one day at a time, and, you know, find, find the life-giving practices um, as a family. What are those things that just bring life and joy uh, and do those things together and, uh, you know, all of the kind of other things that, we, that we've talked about. But ju just taking it one day at a time um, is, is a great, great place to start. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining me in this discussion. Um, really appreciate your wisdom and your experience. And uh, I'm sure this will be helpful for some parents out there. We're going to go ahead and uh, I'll throw up a website right now.
and it'll be up on the screen here. It's not yet, but I'll fix that in the editing. And I'm gonna throw some resources up there. So these guys will throw me a couple of resources in terms of some things, um, whether it's books or, I know Austin had um, a document that he'd shared with us about some things he's processing through this, or we'll give you some tips and tools um, on the resource page to help you through this. And I would highly recommend um, to, to reach out to any of these guys. Um, and again, I'll probably on the resource page, I'll leave email addresses um, for you know contact and things like that. So if you guys need help or need somebody to talk to, um, because it's important as a parent to not go it alone through this. Um, this is difficult and we're, we're bound to stumble and then it just, you like there's shame with that and then there's the inclination to run and hide and if everybody's doing this and stumbling and just running and hiding, we're all alone. And that's exactly what Satan wants. Um, but that's not what God wants. <laughs> God wants parental community um, and imperfection to be gracefully guided through so that we can make it through this together as a body of Christ. So um, anyways, thank you guys for joining us. Um, God bless you and have a great week. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, thank thanks so much. Thank you.